So if I have this up, what do you know what that is? Vegetable soup. And if I hold this up, what is this? Chicken and seed. Yes, it's actually two fish. Strange name, chicken and seed, two fish. But anyway, what I want to say is this. I open up my tuna fish, and in a vegetable soup, I couldn't make my tuna fish sandwich crack. And if I opened up my vegetarian vegetable soup, and in a tuna, I couldn't have a bowl of soup crack. So the labels are important, aren't they? The labels tell us what's inside, aren't they? Yeah. So, so that being said, what I wanted to say is, um, sometimes people wear labels when they um, follow Jesus. Because you seem like sometimes they'll have um, or at all. So if you're a t-shirt that says Jesus is the real thing, or I like this one, Hulk, if you love Jesus with a bumper sticker, you see that. I know, I've seen that. And sometimes the little fish, the little fish in the back of someone's car, yeah, they, um, what they're doing, they're doing what people is that I love Jesus and I want to serve him as follow. Okay? So, John Baptist, do you remember John Baptist? He was Jesus' cousin. Yeah. He was Jesus' cousin. And so when he was preaching, people were coming to be baptized. And the reason they were doing that is because it's popular. It's not because they didn't actually thought about it. And he said to them, he said, you guys are a bunch of snakes. Yeah. Just because you come and get some water put on you doesn't make you all right with God. What you need to do is you need to repent. You need to ask forgiveness of your sins. And you need to turn to God. And so they said, no, well, if it's not right to do that, then what should we do? And they gave us some really good advice. He said, well, if you have two kids, and you see someone giving you one, what would you do? That's right, that's right. And uh, there were some tax collectors who were there. And the tax collectors like to steal from the people. What they would do is they would take more money than they were supposed to. And that's wrong. And he told his tax collectors, he said, look, just take what you're supposed to do, don't steal. And there were some soldiers there. And he told the soldiers, look, don't, don't tell lies about people. He said, do, do your job and be satisfied with what you have, okay? So what he was telling them was the labels were not important if they didn't tell the truth about us, okay? And that's, just the fact, and that's just what we need to do today, okay? So, if God, if God is going to give you blessings and you can help someone, then what I'd like you to do is to do that. Okay, just think about it. Especially during this time of Advent, where there's a lot of people in need. Okay. So then, um, in closing, if you can help someone, that's how they will know that you know Jesus. Okay? Want to have a little prayer before we go? Father, Father, we don't always go the way we should. Help us to live in such a way that the love of Jesus inside. Amen. All right. Yeah. That would be good to Yeah. I
gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, the third chapter, beginning with the seventh verse. Luke chapter 3, verse 7. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able, to, is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the, than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false acts accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary with the chaff. He will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaims the good news to the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. I am speaking God. The season of Advent is a joyful time. We celebrate the Christ who has come and who is to come. The Christ whom we eagerly await who will usher in, in the new heaven and the new earth and who will indeed make all things new again. On this third Sunday of Advent we heard the words of Paul, Rejoice in the Lord always again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone the Lord is near. And we heard the psalm of celebration from Zephaniah. Rejoice and exalt with all of your heart. The Advent is also a season of preparation for the coming of Christ. And the words that we hear are sometimes hard words. But we have to remember what John the Baptist said that, the, that this is nonetheless good news. Now, Zephaniah isn't the book that we run into very often. It has some of the, the gloomiest passages in the, in the Old Testament. You know, the prophet was near despair over what was going on in the land. You know, reality is so dreadful that he concludes that God had no choice but to, de to destroy it all. And God says at the beginning of chapter 1, I will utterly sweep away everything from the face of the earth. I will sweep away humans and animals. I will sweep away the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. And 
I will make the wicked stumble and I will cut off humanity from the face of the earth. There will be a terrible day of judgment. And the prophet goes on and on. It's like he's working out his rage and his despair in this angry rant. But then the cloud lifts. He finds hope and joy simply in the presence of the Lord. And he says, Rejoice and exult with all of your heart. And cries of sorrow are now songs of joy. But you know, nothing has really changed. The things are still as bad as they were, but, but the prophet's reality has changed. He now sees the world and all of his party through the lens of the love of God. Now this is sort of what we get from John the Baptist, isn't it? He starts with the rant. You brood of vipers. You know, who told you to flee from the wrath of God? You know, John was the last of the Old Testament prophets. You know, but we have to remember that this is good news. This is the proclamation of Jesus Christ. But then we get images of hell, the chaff, the waste, these worthless things burning in unquenchable fire. Now this is the kind of thing that stops us, you know, right in our tracks. And it just sucks the joy right out of Christmas. Doesn't it? Let's talk about this joy for just a moment. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. But if we think about joy as something akin to happiness and laughter, then we're going to have a problem with this. Okay? We're aware of the harsh realities of life. You know, the disappointment and, and the grief and sorrow and pain and, and loss. You know, and all of that that come, you know, the senseless tragedies that we, we read about and hear about and we sometimes experience. That seems to come about all too often. You know, and our heart goes out to all of those who suffer, you know, these terrible atrocities. But how can we possibly rejoice in the face of this? But more telling is how can these people who are suffering still rejoice? Joy comes by the Spirit in spite of these horrible things. When we are anchored in God's love and God's presence in our lives, we can rejoice and we can have peace and hope in the certain knowledge that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Joy is not happiness and laughter. But we may have more of those things. But joy is peace and freedom from fear. So the crowds were coming out to, to hear John preach in the wilderness and and to be baptized, and he rants at them, you know, you brew the vipers. Now, when Matthew tells this story, he has John say this only to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But Luke's John says it to the crowd. Okay, that's you and me. Okay, John's point is that the conditions that he is about to talk about Okay, the, the relational conditions of poverty and hunger and, and honesty and trust, that these are systemic problems. Okay, Luke is saying that we are all part of the system and that we 
are all culpable in some way. And oh, and by the way, John says, doesn't matter how religious you are, okay, you're still a part of the system. Okay, and the system is still hurting other people. So it doesn't matter that you've been baptized, and it doesn't matter that you're in Sunday school and worship services every Sunday. Even I, standing up here and preaching every Sunday, even I am as guilty as anyone else. I am not free from this guilt. John lays it on the line. The axe is there, it's ready. It's at the root of the trees. You know, this is a metaphor, we're all trees. And, and every tree that does not bear good fruit is going to get cut down. This is an eschatological warning. It's a warning about the end times when Christ comes. All right, this is the thing that we're waiting expectantly for here in Advent when Christ comes. Those who have not loved as Christ commanded, you remember about that, right? This is the fruit that we are to bear. Christ commands us to love God, to love each other, and to love our neighbor. Those who have not loved as Christ commanded will be cut off. What then should we do? Is the anxious reply. The causes of poverty in the world are many and complex. And they are systemic problems involving economic and political power. And we can add to this the problems of sinfulness and greed, the lack of honesty and trustworthiness, and, and we get a seemingly insurmountable problem with power structures well beyond anything we can see, much less change. And it was the same with the crowds who went out to hear John and be baptized. They had more, no more control over this than we do. So what should we do? Did we despair and do nothing? But what did John tell them? Did he say to go to church and pray harder? Did he say to give more money to charity? Did he say to get involved politically? Did he say to start a revolution? No. He said to love the people God puts in your path. If you have two coats and the other person has none, give them a coat. If you have food, share it with the person who has none. And he spoke to the tax collectors and the soldiers and told them to be honest and trustworthy in their dealings with other people. And these are things within the power of everyone, every one of us, to do. These are the good fruits we are to bear. Our lives live in acts of service. Others. Can you imagine a world where everyone is concerned first for the needs of the other person? Could we, could we then sing joy to the world and really mean it? You know, in a simpler time, this would be a simpler thing to do. The part of our problem is that in this country, we have gotten a skewed sense of enough. How much is enough? 
When do we know we have enough? You know, there, there are, of course, the obvious outliers. You know, the super rich people who have far more money than they have sets and responsibility. And the super rich people who are simply sick with greed. Um, you know, we, we have a skewed sense of, of enough. I, I went through a, a weight loss program and the nutritionist sat me down, you know, in sort of a moment of truth time. And she showed me what a properly sized portion of food, you know, what that looks like in a healthy diet. And I gotta tell you, it's a quite a bit smaller than the portions of food that you typically get in any restaurant. You know, we, we get supersized portions of food that we have been conditioned by advertising to consume more and more. Okay, we are, we have been conditioned to be a consumer society to the point where Black Friday and Cyber Monday have, are almost holiday events now. So we're just ordinary folk. You know, just between us, you know, how much stuff do we really need? You know, and I'm just as guilty as the next person, maybe even more so. So what then should we do? You know, it might be a good experiment to start giving our stuff away until we find out just how much stuff is enough. You know, give it away until we find out just how much we need to have. Give it away. And when we have enough, then we can start sharing the extra that we have with those who don't have enough. But whatever enough is, and you know, however more or less of it we have, Jesus Christ has a claim on it all and on us as well. Luke said the people were filled with expectation. That's the feeling of Advent. Christ is coming and all of creation will be recreated. Nothing will be left untouched. Christ is coming to baptize you and me with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That which is good and worthy will be gathered in with the chaff, the waste, will burn with unquenchable fire. We might want to ask ourselves, what is going to get burned up? Or maybe who will get burned up? Yeah, will some people be destroyed and others saved? Perhaps. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And I practiced that name and I still can't get it right. He had a more difficult answer. He said, if, if, if only it were so simple. If only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. We are all some wheat and some chaff. 
It's the human condition. We are all sinfully self-centered people. And we pray that we may grow in spirit and truth in this life until we are finally recreated in the next life when we will be with Christ. And we will not have to imagine joy to the world, peace on earth. We will live that. All people. All God's people said.